Tonight we continue our series of interviews with candidates in this year's city election. Our guest is running for the seat on the city council currently held by Charles Yancey in District 4. The district mainly includes parts of Dorchester and Mattapan. He lives in Four Corners and he's worked for the Boston Water and Sewer Commission and the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department along with starting a program to help student athletes move on to college. We'd like to welcome Terrence Williams. Thank you very much for being with us, Terrence. Thank you for having me, Chris. First of all, talk about uh, why you've gone from the kind of active life you've had, with you know, working for the public agencies, helping the, the students, uh, to wanting to be on the city council. Well, Chris, um, once again, thank you for having me um, on the show. I appreciate it, but I have to do one thing first because this is like one of my main things. You know, it's time to roll up the sleeves, Chris. You know, it's really time to roll up the sleeves, and we really have to work on our community, get our community back to you know, what it should be. Um, what made me run is, a um, long time ago, my grandmother told me away before she um, passed away, um, when you're tired of being sick and tired, do something about it. You know, and I'm tired of um, our community, of lack of education, lack of jobs, lack of programs to help our young children, um, our elderly um, people, um, again, lack of attention, lack of support. Um, our elderly paved the way for um, us to, to be where we are today. So we really need to um, look out for our elderly. You started the program to help the students, uh, Mighty Mission. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. Um, I started that program um, growing up you know, in Mission Hill. That's where I grew up at. Uh, me and a couple of um, uh, the young gentlemen there, we, you know, we say we had people who, who helped us, who looked out for us, who took us um, um, away to cities, to other towns, um, to venture, um, to see what the other life is about. Uh, so we, we got together and we said, like, you know what, let's start a program. Let's give back. You know, at the age, you know, in, in the 20s, we were like, you know, we're about almost the ace. We're not too much older than the young children. But, you know, at that time, they really looked up to us. So we started a program. Um, to help them with the education um, and use basketball as a tool um, to, to draw them in. And that's what we did. Um, you know, we, we have success stories. We had Wayne Turner, who went on to can play for Kentucky, play in, um, in their last championships um, in the 90s with um, Patino. Um, and we have um, Shabazz Napier right now, who's at um, UConn. We had um, uh, Randell Jackson, who played at Florida State. We also had my daughter, Shailani Petty, who played um, at Melrose. Then she went on to Wright State, then transferred over to Temple. Um, so, we, I mean, our success stories of, of athletes and even non-athletes are, are really, r really high, Chris. What kind of things would you like to see done better, um, so especially if you could do something about it as a city councilor? Well, what I'd like to see, Chris, I'd like to see... Um, um, our school system, our educational system. We have the number one colleges, universities, the number one hospitals here in Boston. And I mean number one all over the nation. You know, why can't we have the number one schools in our community? Why can't we have those same resources, you know, to educate our children, to enhance them and further on in, in, in their educational system? Why can't we bring all that into our, into our community? You know, and that's what I think we, we need, Chris. We don't need um, private schools. We don't need uh, um, all these top-notch prep schools um, where our kids have to go off to get a good education. Why can't they get that good education in their community? Why can't we be the mascot for the nation to say, okay, you know what, this is how you can get good quality school into the neighborhood where everybody can enjoy it? Well, there are some political figures in Boston say it. In order to do that, you need more uh, rights by law to uh, uh, better control the, the assignment of the teachers and maybe even the structuring of the school day. You need more uh, maybe uh, independence for each of the schools. Should we have something like that to turn around these underperforming schools? Well, to, to turn around the underperforming schools, Chris, um, we, um, they have the pilot program where, you know, these institutions are low of, of taxes. So why can't we just revisit that pilot program and just, you know, sit down with them and say, oh, listen, you know, we need for y'all to adopt at least six schools in East District 
and bring, help bring those schools up to number one schools. So you want the universities to, to pitch in and do it that way? Yeah, we need the universities you know, and, the, and the hospitals, everybody you know, who's under the program, to, to help pitch in, to help make our community what our community really needs to be. You know, everybody's building up around in our community um, and, and taking up the space and homeowners are, 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 are flipping the bill on taxes. So why can't the universities and the hospitals that are making billions and billions of dollars, you know, just say, okay, you know what, you're right. You know, this is what we need to do. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna help you adopt six schools and we're gonna bring those technologies that we offer our, our students here or our, our staff here, um, the same thing in those schools. We have more concern about violence now in Boston. There are something like 20% more shootings this year, uh, the number of homicides isn't much different, but, but in Area B2, which is mostly Roxbury, and some of that is in uh, District 4, uh, homicides have doubled this year. So, I mean, what should we be doing about that? We should be doing, Chris, you know, we should be out there talking to our children. We shouldn't be scared to talk to our children. You know, as an elected official, as activists, as religious leaders, as uh, um, city workers, we should be out there talking to our children. We shouldn't be scared. We should be out there asking them, you know, what type of programs would you like to see happen, to, you know, to get you off these streets, to stop you from doing what you're doing. Chris, I can't ask my community to, to do community policing if I'm not out there with them. So I'm not going to ask you something that I won't be able, that I won't do. And I will be out there in the community, you know, doing community policing, sitting down, you know, with the captains of, you know, of the police departments and asking them, you know, give me a list of the, of the criminals, of the top um, children out there who you say are terrorizing our communities. And you know what, Chris, I'll go down and I'll go sit with them because I work with children like that, you know, growing up in the Mission Hill community. You know, we sat down. You know, we, we talk to them, listen, this is what you're doing. You're destroying the community. You're destroying families. You're destroying yourself. So we need to be out there talking to them. We don't need to be sitting behind closed doors making decisions, you know, on their life and their future without being out there talking to them. We got to include them in, in, uh, in everything that we do. Of course, the other problem in the city, uh, the cost of housing, uh, whether you're renting it or trying to become an owner, uh, it's not getting any easier in the city, I imagine. It's, 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 it's not getting easy. Um, as you see, everything is being built around um, in, in Boston. Um, so the cost is going up. You know, we really have to find a way to try to make you know, Boston a livable um, city. You know, everything shouldn't always be about you know, you know, the dollars, the dollars, the dollars. You know, these are families here. You know, though, you know, these are families, some families you know, were born here and, and still are here. You know, so we need to keep those families here. And those families deserve to be here because, you know, they was here when Boston was just a little town. Now, they st you know, their children are growing up and they still need to be here. One idea out there is maybe we ought to have more housing, even some fairly dense, affordable housing near the stops on the Fairmount line. Uh, what do you think about that? I, I think, you know, you know, every place deserves, um, you know, fair market um, um, housing. You know, just because there's easy access to something, the price shouldn't be, you know, go sky high. You know, the price should be, you know, as fair as anything. Just because they own that property, and that's the property that they had before that, before the lines were even um, reconstructed. So why are you going to, um, you know, upgrade, you know, to something that, you know, is going to really make folks sell their house, lose their house? You know, and, and that's not fair. It's, it's not fair. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope everything goes well. And I hope people come out September 24th and elect me um, to run off in the general election in November 5th to become their new city council for District 4. Thank you for the reminder about those dates. Yes, Candidate sir. for Boston City Council, Terrence Williams. That's in District 4. We'll have more news in just a moment.